Money FM 89.3, best of workday afternoon. The Soul of Business with Clarissa Montero on Money FM 89.3. Welcome to the Solo Business of Money FM 89.3. I'm Melissa Hyak, sitting in for Clarissa Montero for the Workday Afternoon. I'm joined on the line by Cecilia Chan, Head of Liquidity Asia, Brochtigan Fintech Group, a specialist in multi-asset liquidity and brokerage technology. Cecilia has worked with major financial institutions in Asia, including at Philips Future, SGX and Hang Seng Indexes. With some 20 years' experience in the sector, she has witnessed and is now helping to lead transformation in the sector. Hello, Cecilia. Welcome to the show. Hi, Melissa. Thanks Hi. for having me on the show. No, at all. Thank you for your time. But first of all, tell us a little bit about Brochtigan. It's a fairly young company, 10 years old? Yes. Uh, so, Brochtigan has been established for 10 years now, uh, 12 years to be exact. So, uh, Brochtigan specialized in um, providing multi-asset liquidity uh, fintech solution, and we do have certain uh, global presence in China, India, Russia, Cyprus, and uh, Thailand. Mm. And a lot of us, um, oftentimes, when we get um, we, we look at a work title, we assume we know what it's all about. So you're the head of liquidity. So maybe if you could just let me know, what exactly do you do there? So I take care of providing or, or uh, consulting for clients who wants to get a uh, liquidity uh, of foreign exchanges. Um, so I, I provide some kind of consultancy for them and tell them where, where they can actually get that. Mm. You've been in the industry for a fairly long time, huh? 20, 20 years, thereabouts? Yeah. Right. So I think in the last 10 to 15 years is, was when there's been the greatest, I suppose, digital revolution going on in the financial services sector. So you've seen the transition from human trading to digital trading um, as one of the players, you know, going through the transformation. What were the kind of challenges that, that you faced? I think um, it's very different from uh, the 90s and uh, right now. Uh, in the 90s, when, you know, the wide adoption of computer, internet, you know, we're all overwhelmed uh, by the efficiency of trading. Uh, we considered from trading flaws to um, computer trading. So that was a very different transition altogether compared to now we... Everybody is already on the computer trading, uh, but now we get even more efficient and we are experiencing a high influx of new product that is coming out because of digitalization. So challenges is that the technology changes all the time and and it's very, very hard to keep up with, you know, what's going on at the other side of the world. Yeah, so we we have a very big challenge to, you know, keep up with what regulators are thinking about, uh, what the other competitors are uh, thinking about, and what the users are thinking about. Well, you talked about digital assets. Um, it's been drawing a lot of attention uh, from, you know, traditional financial institutions, and I think from regulators as well. Uh, a lot of new ones coming up. What what kind of trends are you are you seeing that's, that's coming up? in this space? Yes, so we are seeing a lot of adoption by the traditional financial institutions. Uh, we can see the digital assets, uh, AUM, that is being adopted by the institutions are uh, uh, gradually in, uh, or rather increasing at a very dynamic pace. Uh, we saw that it was only about $25 billion in 2020 and in 2021, we are seeing close to uh, uh, $100 billion. You know, so, so it is increasing at a, a very alarming speed, but it also shows Shows that the institutions are also, uh, you know, coming to be very comfortable, you know, with the regulations that's coming in. They are navigating the space, and they want to be part of this growth. Mm. But do you see consumers being um, educated enough or informed in, enough about these digital assets to be actually trying to dip their toes into it? Yes. Yeah, so there are a lot of channels of information for sure, and we see the global uh, crypto users that has already exceeded 220 million by June 2021. And and this is growing even faster. I would say we, we might even reach uh, 300 million by the end of 2021. And I guess the users are, are seeing the volatility in the crypto, a lot of hype around crypto. Uh, there's a lot of media coverage, a lot of social media that is sharing, you know, and we have a lot of DeFi platforms that's coming up. And it seems like uh, everyone has kind of 
has some kind of information, but not all adequate. That's why I think uh, regulation and investor protections are actually very important in this aspect. And and that's actually still in, I wouldn't call it infancy, but it's still... You know, it's work in progress. Yeah, yeah. it's a, very much a work in progress, right? Um, okay, right. so maybe while that's that's uh, happening, um, let's let's go back to looking at um, being uh, working in the sector, right? Um, you, earlier, you talked about how you know there was a big difference in, in in how trading was done before, and now everything's digital. Yes, you become more efficient, but what kind of skill sets, right, or qualities uh, would a trader or, or person like yourself, right, working in the financial services industry? What what different kind of skill sets would we need now uh, that we didn't ha- need before? And what continue to be relevant? I guess um, in, in the space of trading, we definitely need the same set, uh, same side of, I mean, the same set of the skill sets, right? Um, For example, I mean, we do, sorry to, to so, be obvious. So, <laughs> yeah, so, so we still need to do our homework. We still need to read the markets, you know. In, in, I mean, in the space of, uh, like let's say you're trading in shares, in futures, you know, in even in the fixed income, you still need traditionally the, the same type of skill sets. But when we deal with uh, digital assets, uh, it comes with another set of uh, information. We, we need data analytics, uh, we need uh, aggregations, we need a lot more information because it's still a very young um, asset class and, and there's a lot out there that is not being consolidated into a single data point, not like, you know, uh, shares and futures, they're all very, very mature now. And that's where we are seeing the challenge and, and we have, as a trader for, you know, the new asset class of the digital assets, then we have to be more vigilant in, you know, what kind of info or data that we're getting. Hmm. So would you say that while, you know, um, we are a lot more efficient these days, you can get a lot more done in a much shorter span of time, that if there were any issues, that it would be also more challenging to try and wind it back or to repair or to do the damage control? Again, because of the Uh, split second sort of uh, activation that goes on. Yeah, so unfortunately, I I guess uh, digital assets are really all running on blockchains and, you know, blockchains are actually not so reversible like you know you can have intervention of regulators you know that comes in steps in and say oh you know there's a spike and and we're going to control it you know so um in in the world of DeFi and even in blockchain or the crypto or digital assets class so we do have this um this portion that we are unable to to resolve very efficiently now but i think as the space starts to mature and uh, we will all know how to handle it in time <laughs> One yeah. can keep our fingers crossed too. That's very old school, exactly. but <laughs> something we can do. Yes. Um, okay, let's um, look at the financial services in general. We did promise to talk about women in leadership in, in this sector. Um, it's still very much known as a gentleman's club across the world, not just you know in, in this part of uh, Asia. Um, and that's especially obvious in leadership positions like C-suites, etc. So why do you think that that continues to be the case in this era, 21st century? Well, um, I think there are, there are female-dominated sectors. But so for my, for the sectors that I'm in, coincidentally, they have always been male-dominated. And so when I was in the futures and options space, then, you know, it, it was uh, very manual and there was a lot of male. You need a lot of shouting, you know, need a lot of presence. So the male definitely would take the better advantage over the female, right? But and in this space, uh, in, in this current digital asset space and there's a lot of technicality surrounding it and and somehow um, female doesn't seem to be really I mean not meant to be stereotyping but then um, I, I guess I myself is, is not very technical person I, I would definitely be more of a uh, more emotional or you know sociable type of person yeah mm, so you would say that it's from your observation, at least, right, from your own experience, that there is a, 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 a strong element of perhaps personal interest. But would you, would you say that there ha- that's been observed among your colleagues in the industry, perhaps, that there could be a certain sort of a ceiling that's imposed on women or where there is a, an opportunity that somehow, all things being equal, the opportunity will go to the male 
in the game? Uh, I, I would not say so because the, um, this industry, I, I do see a lot of female coming into the game, um, especially the younger the younger generation. Uh, they are very tech savvy. Um, so I, I don't think that, you know, it would be super male-dominated. There might be a higher percentage of female coming in, into this space, um, especially in the red tech field where, you know, the, the female generally has more patience in dealing with the regulations. Mm. So so what you're saying is, in, in a way, technology is helping to close the gender gap in, in this sector, right? Yes, correct. Yeah. But as you were making a way up, um, do you, did you find that you needed to be, in certain respects, right, more like a man, so-called, to succeed, in order to succeed? In certain sense, yes. And I think it is also uh, very important for uh, for me to have very supportive um, bosses and management as well as colleagues which you know have supported me all along in, in my way of proceed uh, I mean coming along in my career right so management has um, given me a lot of opportunity and letting me to explore a lot of new things that was not in my job scope when I was joining them right so I did get a lot of exposure and I'm thankful for that and um, we'll give uh, a chance to the you know young female uh, as- aspirants to the fintech sector you know, to say thank you to you for your tips. What advice would you have for them uh, entering this sector? Uh, hearing obviously a lot about you know oh it's an old boys club and this and that. You know what would you what kind of advice would you give them? I would think that for a female to come into this space, I do not think that it should be a blocker, you know, to come into a male-dominated space. Uh, I think females should be equally empowered and very educated to come into this space. But I do advise the young females out there to think for yourself. It's okay not to, you know, follow what females should be doing or traditionally we thought that females should be doing. Uh, it's okay to go off the path and, you know, know what you actually want in life and what you want to achieve in your career, you know. And secondly, I guess this advice would be for all people out there. You should be reading and learning and absorbing knowledge like a sponge and not be resistant to changes and read more and you will get to know more. Exactly. That actually makes a lot of sense. Thank you for that. Um, but I have one last question to go. Um, we have about a minute uh, for, for your answer. What do you look forward to in terms of the industry, both um, on a personal and uh, professional level? That's a very good question, actually. <laughs> I, I actually hope to create a certain uh, impact on the traditional finance, especially the future and options um, industry where I came out from. I have seen this industry evolve from a long way from the trading floor to the uh, computer trading and up to now, I think there's a lot to be improved on. Uh, where This industry has been a little bit standstill. So I do hope when I come into this blockchain and, and digital asset space, I, I really hope to create an impact and you know make a difference, help them develop and be more sustainable in, in the long run. Well, you managed to kill two birds with one stone with that answer. Thank you so much, Cecilia. <laughs> Remember the name Cecilia Chan. She will be making waves uh, soon in the fintech sector. Cecilia, thank you so much again for your time. Thank you. All the thank best. You, Melissa. All the best for the thank rest you. of 2021. Thank you. Well, we've been speaking with Cecilia Chan, Head of Liquidity Asia, Broctagon Fintech Group. I'm Melissa Hyak for the Workday Afternoon. This is Money FM 89.3. To listen to more great interviews, download our podcasts at moneyfm893.sg or download our audio app. That's A-W-E-D-I-O. Available on Google Play or the App Store.